Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Although Yvonne De Carlo was one of Hollywood's most devastatingly beautiful B-movie actresses in the 40s and 50s, De Carlo will forever be remembered as the vampire-like matriarch on the goofy sitcom The Munsters. How Yvonne De Carlo's way to Hollywood was through her bedroom. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Yvonne De Carlo, a rare beauty, a real woman who liked men very much. Yvonne De Carlo was a Canadian-born American actress, singer and dancer whose career spanned more than seven decades. A brunette with blue-grey eyes, voluptuous figure and a deep, sultry voice, she was one of the most recognisable stars in the golden age of Hollywood and an early multi-hyphenate. Yvonne De Carlo or Margaret Yvonne Middleton, her friends both before and after fame called her Peggy, an American actress born September 1st, 1922, Vancouver. She appeared in a string of B-Westerns and was best remembered on the big screen for her role as the wife of Moses in the Ten Commandments. But the character with whom she was most indelibly identified was that of Lily Munster, the vampire-like matriarch of the TV sitcom family The Munsters. Some of DiCarlo's other films included Band of Angels, McClintock and Munster Go Home. She was three when her father abandoned the family. Her mother turned to waitressing in a restaurant to make ends meet. A rough beginning for an actress who would one day be one of Hollywood's elite. Yvonne's mother wanted her to be in the entertainment field and enrolled her in a local dance school and also saw that she studied dramatics. Yvonne was not shy in the least. She was somewhat akin to Colleen Moore who, like herself, entertained the neighbourhood with impromptu productions. In 1937, when Yvonne was 15, her mother took her to Hollywood to try for fame and fortune, but nothing came of it, and they returned to Canada. They came back to Hollywood in 1940, where Yvonne would dance in chorus lines at night while she checked in at the studios by day in search of film work. After appearing in unbilled parts in three short films, she finally got a part in a feature. Raised by a single mother who enrolled her in dance lessons as a child, De Carlo was still a teen when she began landing bit movie parts, finally winning her first lead in the unremarkable 1945 western Salome, where she danced, in which she played an exotic seductress. In the 40s and 50s she continued to tempt and allure in a variety of big screen roles in westerns, comedies and film noir. While she occasionally appeared in more prestigious projects, she was Moses' wife in The Ten Commandments and a fabulous femme fatale in the film noir Criss Cross. She was usually called upon to do little more than look gorgeous and act campy. In the 60s she became a pop culture icon when she was cast in her iconic role as Lily Munster on the CBS sitcom The Munsters. The highlight of her post-Munsters work came in 1971 when she portrayed an ageing bombshell in Stephen Sondheim's Follies, in which she defiantly belted out the anthem, I'm Still Here. The title nicely summed up her career, which spanned an impressive half a century. Fans of the Munsters who are unaware of Yvonne's early movie career would probably be quite surprised to learn that she was considered to be one of the all-time great Hollywood beauties. Producer Walter Wanger described her as the most beautiful girl in the world. A slight exaggeration perhaps, considering she only finished fifth in the Miss California quest during the war, but she certainly turned heads and raised temperatures among the menfolk of her day. The ravishing and ravenous Yvonne De Carlo was at the height of her beauty when Robert Wagner spotted her in her car alongside his at a drive-in restaurant called Jack's at the beach. 
She nodded for him to come over, which he duly did, and she invited him back to her place. After three torrid love-making days at her home, he returned to find his car still parked where he had left it. A week later he ran into Tony Curtis, who described in detail how he, too, had met Mr. Carlo at the same place that very week and had accepted her invitation to accompany her home for similar fun and games. Everyone in town has had Yvonne de Carlo, he most ungallantly wrote in his memoirs. But it was true, she liked men. Just before America's entry into World War II, Peggy landed a few uncredited bits in 20 or so B-grade features, eventually being signed by Paramount Pictures in 1942. The studio soon dropped her, and she was picked up by Universal instead. More bit parts followed for the next three years, until she finally scored the title role in a Universal feature called Salome, Where She Danced. It was not much of a movie, but it finally kick-started her career. She was now Yvonne de Carlo, and at the height of her considerable beauty. Already Yvonne was acquiring a reputation for being easy. She was also more than willing to make headlines. Any publicity was good publicity, she felt. That kept her name before the cinema-going public. Affairs with band leader Artie Shaw in 1942 and Howard Hughes from 1943 to 1946 were common knowledge. In her 1974 autobiography, she described Hughes as an expert lover, although she was quite put off by the man's toenails, which she said curled almost all the way around his toes. Howard taught me how to land a plane and how to take off but he never taught me anything about flying in between, she said. He thought I had learned the difficult parts and that was enough. Mr Hughes was an odd fish, to say the least. Yvonne's other lengthy relationships during the war included those with singer-actor Rudy Valley and actors Carlos Thompson and Sterling Hayden. Robert Stack and Yvonne were an item for some months in 1946. A year after that she was briefly engaged to Howard Duff. In her memoirs, Yvonne happily names the many famous men who visited her bed. Quite a few were serious relationships that she hoped might evolve into true love, even marriage. But there were an awful lot of one-night stands too. Somewhere along the way, she found time for several seemingly serious involvements. James Stewart, Ray Milland, Scott Brady and Prince Ali Khan all intimated they were in love with her, but none of them went the distance. In 1949 she broke up with Jock Mahoney, Sally Field's stepdad, after suffering a miscarriage. The breakup was not amicable, Yvonne telling reporters that Jock's only claim to fame was being seen with her. Her next serious entanglements were with Steve Cochran, Rock Hudson and bullfighter Mario Cabre and Robert Taylor in 1953. Among her many sexual encounters were the following The Shah of Persia, Rod Cameron, Walter Matthau, Errol Flynn, Red Skelton, Anthony Quinn, Billy Wilder and Burt Lancaster. According to her autobiography, she and Burt made love on a mink coat in her backyard. Like many, many of her encounters, it was a one-off thing. In 1954, she married stuntman Bob Morgan, her only husband. Morgan was an alcoholic who was seriously injured during the making of How the West Was Won in 1962. He was crushed between some logs on a railway flat car when a chain snapped and very nearly lost his life. Yvonne nursed him through his five years of recuperation and rehabilitation, and it sent her flat broke. There was clear evidence, Morgan felt, of negligence on the part of the studio, MGM, so he sued the company for $1.4 million. According to Yvonne, studio employees were threatened with losing their jobs unless they supported the company's stance that all precautions had been taken on the set, and that the accident was the fault of no one. With no witnesses to back him, Bob Morgan's suit was unsuccessful. 
he and Yvonne parted company in 1968. When the role of Lily Munster was offered to her, she was compelled to take it for financial reasons, even though it was against her better judgment. Oddly enough, it would define her as an actress. Back in 1956, Cecil B. DeMille had given her the chance to perform in an A-grade blockbuster, his epic The Ten Commandments. She was allocated the role of Sephora, Moses' wife, and she played it well. Today, the name Yvonne De Carlo is really associated with two productions only, The Ten Commandments and the TV series The Munsters. Strange as it might seem, the former has dated significantly, yet the series still retains its charm. Yvonne spent her final years as a resident of the motion picture and television country house and hospital in Woodland Hills. She died from heart failure in 2007 at the age of 85. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. Do you think the perception of an actress like Yvonne De Carlo, who loved men so much, is negative in Hollywood?